Hey, this is Kiran Agrawal from the Sparking Entrepreneur Show, and today we have Todd Allen with us. Todd, also known as Professor Econ, is a lifestyle, leadership, and high performance coach. For over twenty-four years, he has taught in the decision science area. Todd helps people from all walks of life to create, build, and maintain high levels of lifestyle and performance by focusing mainly on five. Focus decisions in major areas, five major areas. My focus decision on five major areas, and he is also uh, very, very well known in Colombia as well. So, with that being said, let's hear it from Todd. Todd, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here with you. So, Todd, very excited to know about the the journey that you have been on. So, tell us about everything. Uh, tell us about when did coaching came along. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that question. Uh, very early on, when I was younger, I wanted to be an astronaut, right? Uh, but uh, Calculus 2 told me, no, that's not a very good idea. <laughs> so I, I had to find other things that I was interested in. And so I've always been interested in, um, in, in learning. And one day, uh, my father, who uh, was an a, um, adjunct professor, a business professor at the, in, in, the, in the small town that we're from, he said, hey, listen, I have football tickets to go watch the big football game with uh, uh, a, a university that was very famous in my, in my state. And I have an eight o'clock business class. I want you to teach it. It was business math. He said, I want you to teach that class for me. And so that was my introduction into actually teaching and I enjoyed it. And so uh, I had been involved in, in teaching ever since then um, and as an economics professor for over 24 years. And I'm taking that information that I've learned and presented while an economics professor and now moving it into the decision sciences space and the personal development. And I find that it's a, it's a good fit because economics is really all about choices and decisions. And so most people, when they think of economics, they think it has to deal with money, but it does not. It has to deal with choices, the everyday choices that we make every day of our lives. And I bring that into the coaching space and help people to uh, to make better life decisions, better life choices to help them act, self-actualize into becoming the people that they want to be in their lives. Wow. So bringing the knowledge that you have, Professor Econ, from the from the from the subject that you have learned for so long uh, and bringing it to actual life. And it's about choices, as you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so as so so that we get a better understanding on how this this applications work in the real life can you give us a client example a client success story so that okay. we can understand yeah. okay i will do that uh, i had a, a client situation where um he was not real clear on what his goals are and what he wanted to accomplish and so we actually sat down we actually did an exercise where he was to visualize um and to write on paper the things that he wanted, not in any particular order, but just overall what he wanted. And so uh, when I told him this particular exercise, he was not very convinced that this would work for him. I just told him, listen, just be persistent with it, just do it, and then we'll discuss it afterwards. We'll find out how you feel, what your thoughts were afterwards. And so he did this for about 30 days, and then we, we had a conversation afterwards, and he told me he absolutely loved it. And this was about six years ago when we started this process. And this is something that he still uses today to actually get from where he is at a particular moment to where he wants to be. So I call it basically the gap analysis, right? That you move from one place, you jump over the hurdles and you get to the other spot where you want to be. And, and that is uh, a process that, that we do on a regular basis to kind of help people to, to jump the gap or get where they want to be. But I think the most important thing that, that, I, I show people is most people are worried about their finances and they're worried about their money. But what I'm able to do in the conversations that we have is to show them that money is not about the pieces of paper that people may have and fold up in their purse or their wallet. The actual thing of value is the human being. The actual thing of value is you and I, because we are the creative force that earns that whatever revenue or whatever exchange that we get for paper, we are the ones that earn and create. So it's not that uh, the paper money is a thing of its importance. The important thing is you and I as a living, breathing human being. And so once we're able to 
build the esteem of the individual, we're able to conquer whatever challenges that they have in their life. Totally, totally. It is it is dependent on the esteem, and once the self esteem is high enough, whatever because people are also doing the other people are also doing what they want in their life and living the life yes. while you are struggling with the life lifestyle that you that you have created for yourself unconsciously, but uh, could be changed. So yes, uh, on, uh, five elements, right? Five major areas that yes. you work with. Yes, tell us about that. Uh, in detail. Okay. Um, in economics, they have what they call five social determinants of wealth or five social determinants of wealth and health. And those social determinants are lifestyle, income, education, health, and travel. Uh, and so what I do is I focus on those five areas in one's life, because again, there are five social determinants that if one is lacking in any one of these areas, you can pretty much kind of to tell where they might be. And so the idea is to kind of elevate those areas in a person's life from a holistic perspective. Now, honestly, I've changed it, all right? The, the traditional idea is income, education, food, transportation, and housing. But I've made that slight change because I included lifestyle because when we're talking about health, we're also talking about one can improve their health by changing their lifestyle. Okay. Mm. Now, when I'm saying changing lifestyle, I'm not saying that we're going to go out and make a lot of money and all live on a boat. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But what I'm mm. saying in terms of lifestyle changing is that if we know someone has certain types of health ailments by changing a lifestyle of simply by the way someone eats, right? Changing that, that little change in lifestyle can elevate their health, but can overall elevate their, their, uh, their life in a positive way. Uh, most men, and I'm just speaking, I'm not I should say most men and women. I'm just saying most men, because, you know, at, at my age, uh, men start to think in terms of their mortality, but most people realize that they are not going to live forever in this existence. And so they come to grips with their mortality. Lifestyle becomes very important from that perspective, because when you change your lifestyle, you're able to change all the other elements, the other four elements of the social determinants. Most people want to leave some sort of a legacy. Most people want to leave some sort of a mark on the world so that the world knows that they lived. And so that's what I attempt to do with my clients is to help them decide what their legacy is going to be and how they can actually attain that so that they can be of benefit to future communities, of a benefit to their family in the future as well. Got it. Got it. And lifestyle, the way that I looked at it before listening it from you was something else. The first idea is about a luxury lifestyle. It's something that, that comes to mind, but lifestyle is of course something else. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's an advanced version of health and, and other, other things as well. Yes. So Todd, uh, can you please tell us about, the processes, like uh, because you work with these five elements, I'm calling them elements, but yeah. they are major areas in life. Right. So when someone comes to you, why does someone come to you? First, tell us that. When does they come to you? What is the process? And what transformations have you seen so far? And what do you expect to see in the future? Okay. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I hope I remember it in, in order. Uh, why would someone come to me? That's a very good question. It, someone would come to me if they recognize within themselves that there's more to life than they are experiencing, right? Mm. That if they're, they're feeling as though that, you know, they, they could be successful or they may not be as successful as they want to be or they want to be, be, be more successful and more high performing, they realize that there's more that can be done. So that's when they would, would would come to me. The process would then be is that we would have a conversation and would say, listen, what is it that you want? Where is it that you want to go? And what do you think is holding you back? Right. And so once we have a, a an understanding of that and a clearer focus on what it is that they want to accomplish, we then explore the resources or we explore the abilities or we explore the talents that that they innately have 
that we can combine with other things in order to help them move past where they are towards where they want to go. Now, that is a very challenging situation because most people are not honest with themselves. So this, so, so the process is that we have to have absolute honesty that, you know, you would have to really dig deep and, and maybe uncover some things that you're not comfortable about. Right. And we have to deal with those things. Once we do that, now the next process would be, okay, we figured out what tools, what resources we have that are available. Now we put together the plan. Having a goal is one thing, but there has to be incremental steps to reach that goal, right? Or missions, right? We have a goal. We have an overall goal of what we want to do, overarching mission of what we want to do. Now we have to take the incremental steps to get there and to develop habits. So the idea is we develop habits, those daily activities that we can do so that 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, we see the progress that we've had, that, that the move along the way. Most people look to see how far they have to go without turning around and realizing how far they've come to this point. So we just have to look at it from a holistic and realistic perspective to where it, to where they are at that point. Uh, I missed a question. The, uh, what did I answer? Uh, what my expectations are? Is that what you're asking me? Yes. What do you, what do you see? What do I see? Uh, work with you. What what transformations do you see? Okay. What 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 I see is that it's impossible to be the same person today that you were yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And so every single day we are changing in one way or another. What I attempt to do with with people I work with is to help them to have a conscious idea of what they want to become tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, and we do that through activities. There's no such thing as time management. Even though that we've been taught that all our lives, there's no such thing because time is a man-made concept, right? The most high is eternal, right? So there is no time. Mm -hmm. And so the, the concept is we don't manage time. We only manage our activities within a certain period. And so what I attempt to do is to help people really understand how important they are, how powerful they are, and not to measure their success based upon a watch or based upon time, but we measure their success based upon the cumulative activities that we're able to do. Cumulative activities that they were able to do in a specific period of time. Uh, and when measured, they have, they, they have been productive all throughout. That, that's what comes up. Absolutely. Okay. What what we do is every week, every week we figure out what we want to, what is that you want to accomplish for this week? What are the goals that you want to accomplish this week? And then we have increment along the way, we have uh, check-ins, right? Every day we have a check-in. Okay. What did you accomplish today? What, what more do you have to do? What barriers do we have to eliminate? And then by the end of the week, there should be some sort of a deliverable that says at the beginning of the week, you started here at the end of the week, this is what you've accomplished. And if we put a series of those together, right, a series of those together, it's sort of like we, you and I were talking about, you know, cricket, right? Cricket is a culmination of different batsmen that come up to each mm. one does different things. You have someone mm. that hit for, 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 for just singles, right? And you have another one that can hit, you know, can hit it across the line for, you know, the, the mm. most points. But mm -hmm. the idea is that for a cricket team to be successful, you have to have different types of batsmen or you have to have different types of bowlers, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's the cumulative effect that determines whether or not a team is successful or not. When a person mm -hmm. works with me, we basically become a team. And so we go through that process to say, okay, these are the cumulative effects of the activities that we've done. And so at the end of a particular time period, this is what we expect to have. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much, Todd, for explaining that to us. One final question on the same point is how to reach out to you. Tell us about how, that. how to reach out to me. Well, you can reach me at my email. It's Todd, T-O-D-D, -D, at 247-365-success.com. That's T-O-D-D -D, at 247-365-success.com. There you have it, guys. Do reach out to Todd. We'll mention the email in the show notes as well. Next question to you. Todd, uh, so I, I have been reading this book called The Happiness Advantage. 
so where it says that the happier you are no matter what the situation in life the better you will perform in every situation in life mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, whether it is any any situation the reason i'm asking you this question is because you are professor econ <laughs> so do you see that that happier people happier people are doing well than the people who are sad oh absolutely because you know there's there's also some physiological impacts when you are happy not just uh, emotional or mental right so that when you're happy you 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 tend to be more energetic right you tend to uh look at things from a more optimistic perspective and so mm -hmm. when you're happy you come to realize that you never have a bad day you might have a mm -hmm. bad moment but you never have a bad day and so you're optimistic optimistic to see what more can be done right so but happiness also is a choice. It is mm -hmm. a psychological uh, a choice that people make uh, that they're going to be happy or they decide that, you know, life is such that you're going to be sad, right? It's all about expectations. If you expect to be successful and you're optimistic about it, chances are likely that you're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Thank you so much for explaining it to us and to me especially. So next question to you, uh, Todd, one question that I sent was about the book that you're writing. So if ever you were to write a book, what would it be called and why would you name it so? Ah, that's a good, that, that's a good question. Um, First, tell us about why would you name it so? Okay, you'll have to tell us why. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, the, the, the name of the book would be How to Get From Here to There in One Lifetime. Mm. <laughs> right. Wow. Why why did I name it that way? Because sometimes people fail to do what they can do today because they think that tomorrow they can do it tomorrow. But one of the things that I've that I've learned uh and we've been told this but you know un unless you experience it, you know, firsthand you you sometimes forget. You know, tomorrow is not promised to us. I I'll give you an example. Um we all have come through the pandemic right? Uh, and that was a, a, tra a traumatic experience for everyone all over the world. My wife and I had gotten married uh, 2019, uh, lap, the October of 2019. And I went back to the United States thinking that uh, I was going to bring her to the US soon afterwards. Mm. And then the pandemic hit and mm. countries all over the world closed their borders. And so my wife and I, newly married, separated the first nine months of our marriage because of COVID, because mm -hmm. she's South American, she's in she's in Colombia, and and I was in the U.S., and we had to make some decisions. I had to make some decisions because I didn't want to be separated from from my wife, uh, and I had to make the choice that I was going to. It would be easier for me to leave the U.S. and to live in Colombia as opposed to the other way around. Mm -hmm. A lot of people put off thinking that they have time, you know, there's that word again, they have time to be able to accomplish the things that they want to accomplish. We don't know when the, our time on this existence is over. So we have to have the activities on a daily basis, consistent basis to be sure that wherever we are now, that we can reach our goals within our lifetime, but we have to be consistent in our actions and create habits that create uh, the, the the success in our lives that we want. So the book will be how to get from here to there in one lifetime. <laughs> wow, awesome. By Todd Allen. Look out for it, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Todd, final question to you. So as you mentioned, consistent activities lead to success no matter what your endeavor is. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is this ghost, right? There is this... Uh, laziness ghost or or procrastination ghost mm, mm. uh it, it 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 sure is a beautiful ghost right you can spend time and time and and you'll you'll feel you'll feel bad afterwards mm -hmm. but at that time you feel uh, a pleasure to waste mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. versus the idea of consistent activities that you that you suggest mm -hmm. so how 
to make sure that we are get, getting towards the right one and away from the wrong. That's a very good question. Um, a lot of times what I've come to understand is that people procrastinate because they have some fear, right? Mm -hmm. and, and fear stands for forget everything and run. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so they have a fear of failure. They have a fear that they won't measure up, that they that they don't have enough, that they don't that they're they won't measure up to whatever it is that they want to accomplish, right? And so what really has to take place is that we have to build the self-esteem of the individual, of the person. And we have to realize that the way that we grow is by making mistakes, right? Also, and, and again, I don't know what the, the listeners' beliefs are or their values are, but um, we do know that from a religious perspective, there was a person who was perfect, right? Mm -hmm. But they killed him. Mm -hmm. So given that we are not perfect, right? Mm -hmm. You, there, we're always going to be criticized. Even, mm. even he that was perfect was criticized to the point where they, they they assassinated him, they killed him. So we don't have a chance as imperfect beings. So once we realize that we're not perfect, we're not going to reach some level of perfection or the level of nirvana until a later point in time. Why not just do small activities today mm. and then small activities tomorrow and then small activities the next day? And not mm -hmm. worry about what happened yesterday because yesterday yesterday is over, tomorrow doesn't exist. We only have the present, and the present is a gift that the Most High gives us right now. A present. Present is the is the gift, guys. So so do most out of it, and do follow Todd. Uh, Todd's Instagram would be mentioned below but tell us once Todd uh, do you have any social media all yes uh, you can follow me on Instagram Facebook uh, TikTok at Todd underscore Allen A-L-L-Y-N uh, you can also uh, follow and subscribe my uh, my YouTube page is called Infinite Growth TV all one word Infinite Growth TV on YouTube and uh, you can also email me again at Todd, T-O-D-D, at 247-365-success.com. I'll be happy to always have a conversation with you, and, and I look forward to it. Um, you know, I, I grow every single day because of the people that the Most High puts in my path, and I learn something from everyone every single day, and, and I'm very thankful for it. And I'm thankful for you for allowing me to be on your platform to share uh, my thoughts and my ideas. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so much. I'm just, I'm just doing what is fun to me and <laughs> it's automatically transitioning into the things that it is. Yeah. So I'm just learning from guys like you and making sure that my audience also does the same. Mm -hmm. Todd, thank you so much for such a great conversation. It was a pleasure to meet you today. Mm -hmm.